Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Alright, so last time we were told a little bit more about the great destiny that lies before us, and we've also suited up to look much more like a hero now. Definitely better than the stuff we had on before. And we also opened up a path down to the fabled surface using the Emerald Tablet, so... That is definitely the next place to go. Before we do that, however, there are of course a few preparations we need to make, and Fi is going to give us a little bit of an update here. We pretty much already know all this. Uh, this brings up one of probably the biggest faults of this game to most people, is the fact that Fi just will not stop talking. <laughs> she pretty much reminds you of just about everything that other people already said. So, most of these conversations are pretty much just superfluous, you know, there's no real reason to have them. She did, however, uh, introduce us to one new thing. We can now check out our gear menu, and you can see we can actually adjust the interface between Standard, Light, and Pro. We're gonna go with Pro, not trying to toot my own horn or anything, but because of this, it gives you a nice clean view. You can see none of the overlays are there or anything, so I think that kind of gives you a, wide, a wider field of vision, you know? You can kind of see more of what's going on, get a little bit better view of the landscape, so... I definitely prefer this interface. Alright, so like I said, we have a couple preparations to make, nothing too big. Uh, but we are gonna head up here into a slightly new area that we haven't checked out yet. This is the Bazaar. Now, we may have seen the building around, but we've never actually been inside, so this should be pretty cool. Alright, so yes, as you can see, this is basically a giant bustle of activity. We've got all kinds of different places to go. Uh, we have kind of this little restaurant bar type thing over here, kind of neat. Don't really do too much over there. Uh, this guy introduced you to a side quest later on, but he's really not that important. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and talk to all these shop owners because that would take a long time. There's a lot of dialogue. But uh, basically, I'll kind of introduce you to each one. This guy right here will uh, repair our shield if it needs it. He'll also be responsible for upgrading our items later on if we have the right materials. And that fortune teller will actually talk to us if we get close. So I'm going to kind of stay on the perimeter here. Uh, this lady right here is the item check. If your item pouch is full or you need to withdraw something, you can actually store it in here, pick it up later. You can also actually sell some things here, but again, we'll get to that when we need it. And this guy over here is pretty much just the owner of the general store. You can see a lot of things already available that look familiar. Bombs, arrows, seeds. So, and as you can see, he'll also sell us a replacement shield of ours breaks. We don't really need any of this right now. I mean, you need a bomb bag and a quiver and all that stuff to hold this anyway, so no real point. And this place over here is actually pretty important for the time being. As you can see, this lady's got some dialogue over her head, so let's talk. Hey, you there. Yes, you, the adorable boy with the golden hair. Welcome to the potion shop. You can drink our potions when you're injured to fill up your hearts. Hey, you're one of those knights, aren't you? Or one in training at least, huh? Let me tell you, one look at you and I can tell you'll need my potions by the cauldron full, so don't try to slink away without stocking up. Tch, that's not very nice. Mm -hmm. Alright, so yeah, she's gonna ask if we have an empty bottle. We can't sell you a potion if you don't have an empty bottle to pour it into, but thankfully she's gonna give us a spare, so uh, that's pretty nice. We're definitely going to get our first empty bottle here. Sweet. So for free, no effort. That's always good. Mm. So they fit in our adventure pouch, and if we ever get to the point where we can't fit any more stuff, and we can drop them off the item mm. check. I mentioned that before. Alright, so now that we have a bottle, we can actually get our first potion. I believe right now only these two are available, the green potion and the red potion. The green potion, you may be familiar with it, but it doesn't quite do magic like it used to do. That's actually a stamina potion, it'll give you twice the stamina. The red potion is, of course, your traditional heart health potion. We're not actually going to buy any right now because we're going to need the empty bottle for something here in a second, so we'll just skip out on it, but thanks for the bottle anyway. Alright, I guess we can stop by the fortune teller now. As you can see. Oh, young man, what calamitous visions appear before me. You may choose not to believe me, but my eyes foresee a hazardous, thorny road ahead for you. But I can foresee what will befall you, for I am a fortune teller. Trust my piercing eyes. Listen to my pure and innocent voice. I will do you no harm. Gaze deeply into my eyes and come closer. Yeah, he's a little bit creepy. We're not really going to be using him for much, but he can kind of help you out if you really don't know where to go. The game kind of explains it to you enough, I don't know how you wouldn't, but in case you need help, you can talk to him. Uh, we're not going to for the time being, because there's nothing useful we can get. The music around his stall is pretty cool, though. Now, you can't really hear it too well right now, but it's actually pretty neat. So, uh, just one more thing we want to check out. We can see we got a chest back here. Master Link. 
This treasure chest-like object is a relic of ancient times, left by the goddess for her chosen hero. However, I lack any information on how it can be opened at this time. That's right, so scattered throughout the overworld are going to be these mysterious-looking treasure chests that we can't do anything with, so obviously that's something that's going to be opened up to us in time, but for right now, again, nothing really we can do. It kind of sucks at the beginning of the game, you know, there's so much you can't do yet, but that's how it goes. Alright, so we're out of the bazaar, and we're pretty much ready to head off now. I just got an empty bottle. Like I said, there <laughs> wasn't a whole lot to do, but uh, it was pretty important, because we are going to use the bottle for a side quest here soon. Uh, believe it or not, we're actually going to be starting a side quest right now, so... <laughs> you know, always got to do that before you head off on the real adventure, but... Alright, so we've made pretty much all our preparations. We've got our uh, shield, we've got, you know, our bottle. We're ready to go. Fine wants to talk to us, but I'm going to ignore her because she's just going to point out the column of light again. So, you can see it. Let's go. And for the first time, we are pretty much turned loose here on the overworld in the sky. So we can check out our map and check out all this stuff around here. You can see it's actually kind of spread out. Uh, there's a couple interesting islands. Some of the bigger ones, you can tell like that one there. This kind of multicolor one over here. This one over here. You know, some of these are pretty important later on. But again, beginning of the game, not much we can do. We do, uh, however, actually want to head over to this island. So before we actually make our way into the Column of Light, we are going to do that. So it's a little bit of a flight, but it can be sped up by finding these various things around the sky. You can kind of see there's a rock with a hole in it over here. We can actually check this out. Looks like something's inside of it almost. So as we get closer here, we can actually fly right through it. If we're good enough. And you can see that's a nice little speed boost, so that'll get you along your way quicker if you've got long distances to travel. Very helpful, actually. So you can see we've got a little building over here. It's kind of in the shape of a pumpkin, so we can just jump off. And one thing I really like is how there's no loading screen there. There's no transition. You just go straight to it, and you can still see, like, the rest of the sky. That's pretty cool. So, um, yeah, not much to look at outside. Let's head in. Alright, this is the Lumpy Pumpkin. I kind of equate this to the Lon Lon Ranch of the game. The Romani Ranch, you know, whichever Zelda you want to take it from. This is kind of like that. Sort of more of a country atmosphere, you know, you've got the acoustic guitar playing. So, uh, yeah, this is a pretty interesting place. You might have seen a couple things in that little cutscene that looked interesting, like uh, that thing right there. So let's see if we can learn a little bit more about what's going on here. Well, well. Welcome. I can see from your handsome outfit there that you're a Skyloft Knight. I hope you'll make yourself at home. Have the rupees sitting on top of the chandelier caught your eye? Don't go thinking that you can get those down, you hear? You might think that you can knock the rupees down by bumping something and making the chandelier shake, but don't even think about it. Are we clear? <laughs> hmm. No, you know how it goes in games. You're told not to do something. We gotta do it. Alright, so let's check upstairs. I want to see if we can get to that, hopefully without causing too much damage, but... Oh yeah, and this guy here, you can recognize him as one of Groose's buddies. He's just gonna talk to you about bugs. He likes bugs, so just keep that in mind for the future. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of dialogue in this game, which is a lot of kind of optional flavor text. If you want to sit there and read it all, it can really expand the, <laughs> the playing time quite a bit, but we're gonna keep it moving a little bit. So you can see, there's the chandelier, we got some rupees, we got that uh, heart-looking thing up there. So uh, if we check out the sign, no roughhousing on the balcony, big ruckuses cause the chandelier to shake. Hmm. I think we can use this to our advantage, let's try this. Oh, see, look, it shook. Let's do it again. Oh, getting it, do it again. Why would you do that? Get down here and come here this instant. Uh-oh. I think we might be in a little bit of trouble. <laughs> well, we got it down. I mean, you can't just put those up there like that. Somebody like me is going to come along. We got to get it. All right, so let's check this out. 
And this is, of course, if you've played any Zelda game before, you pretty much know what this is. This is a piece of heart. Four more to increase our heart capacity. So three to go. Awesome. So there's our first piece of heart. Yeah, we're going to be collecting quite a few of those throughout the journey. And we can pick up the rupees, too. Probably scare these guys to death here. See what she's got to say. She seems nice. Maybe she'll be gentle on us. <laughs> Don't even pretend that was an accident. I put signs up there to warn people to be careful of the chandelier and everything. Well, I washed my hands of the whole thing. Don't be surprised if my dad gives you a royal chewing out. Yeah, she's just like constantly nice, you know, like I just broke the chandelier and she's still kind of being nice to me. <laughs> Alright, well, I guess we should face the music. What is wrong with you? Just look at what you've done. You broke my fancy custom ordered chandelier. You're going to be working for me for free until you pay off every single rupee that chandelier cost me. Got that? Are you ready to own up to your responsibility? <laughs> no, screw you. No, yeah, we'll do it. That's right, and I'm gonna hold you to that. Let's not waste any time putting you to work. I need you to deliver my famous soup to Aegis, Skyloft's Night Commander. Night Commander's a regular here. He says he can't get his day started without a bowl of my soup. What do you say? You ready to deliver some soup to the Night Commander? Yeah, let's do it. All right then, here's the hot pumpkin soup. Deliver that to the Night Commander. All right, and we get the hot pumpkin soup. This is, believe it or not, what we needed the bottle for. Yeah, it was all planned. I knew this was gonna happen. <laughs> all right, so he ate cold soup. We're gonna have to take it over to him. We've got to deliver it in less than five minutes or the soup will get cold. So better get to it. Let's get a move on. Five minutes is really nothing. I mean, we can rush and we're gonna do it as fast as we can, but we'll get it there in a couple minutes. So it's pretty easy. And of course, if you don't remember, Aegis is the guy who was in the uh, sparring hall. He gave us a little bit of training with our sword play. Yeah. All right, so now let's get moving. Again, we can use the uh, giant rock thing here to give us a bit of a boost. You can climb pretty fast if you kind of flick the Wii Remote up and hold it there. Uh, you know, you don't get a lot of horizontal speed, but you can climb the air pretty quickly, so. See, we're actually pretty well above it. I overestimated it a little bit. There we go. Might as well get some air while we got that speed. Alright, so let's try to land just about as close to this place as we can. Save us a little bit of walking around time. You don't land exactly where you dive off, but you land pretty close. So this should be pretty good. We'll land right outside the uh, Night Academy here. Alright, so drop the sailcloth, get off, and we're back. So. The uh, sparring hall is just right over here. Let's head inside. And here is Egus. We have definitely made it within five minutes. All right, so he smells something. He knows that earthy aroma. That's his favorite pumpkin soup. Ask the owner of the lumpy pumpkin to bring me some, but you went out of your way to deliver some. That's right. Yes, give it to me. Nope, sorry, it's mine. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> I love I love the fake out things like that. Some of the no dialogue is kind of funny in this game. So good. Mmm, this is the stuff. Pumpkin soup is best, piping hot. Well done. Say thanks to the owner for me. Yep, cool. Alright, so that completes that. We don't get any reward because, well, we're still kind of paying off all the damage we did, so really the next thing is to just go back to the Lumpy Pumpkin, tell him you're done, and he'll spend some time thinking of what to do next. We don't really need to go and, you know, do all that right now, though, so we'll just wait a bit to tell him we finished it. He'll probably figure it out anyway. All right, so that's pretty much it. We just started a little bit of a side quest there. We're, of course, going to have a few more jobs because that chandelier was probably pretty expensive. So we're going to have to be paying that off throughout the course of the game, but we finished the first bit of it now, so we're good to go on that front. And I say without any further ado, we've been kind of dancing around this for a little while now. We're going to head towards the surface, so let's fly straight towards this green column of light. You can see there's kind of a, a hole opened up in the clouds underneath, so that should be our ticket down. There we go, get some speed. Yeah, now we're moving. You can move pretty quickly if you do a dive bomb like that. So, of course, again, Fi is going to come out and tell us, hey, look at the giant green column. We can see where we are on the map. I mean, this is like literally holding your hand. So we can reach the surface by passing through the clouds and the base. Gotcha. There's also a bird there. He's got 20 rupees if I can hit him, but these are pretty tough, and I'm at a terrible angle. Oh, didn't quite get him. Oh, well. Now, those are pretty hard to hit. I've done it before, but it's not easy. Let's 
Sweet. <laughs> That's a pretty cool introduction. No, that little scene doesn't happen every time you fall down, but this one's pretty cool. Tell you what, that's a pretty powerful sail claw. That was a long drop. <laughs> that was like skydiving distance. I don't think that would have helped that much. Master Link, we've arrived. This is the fabled surface that has long been part of Skyloft legend. By my calculations, you are currently positioned in a location known as the Sealed Grounds. Okay, and here, yes, this little map scene. Get used to seeing this. Basically, every time you enter a new area, this is going to happen. Zoom, 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 rotate. <laughs> every time. All right, so let's, there we go. Let's close up. Please proceed with caution, Master. Nah, I was planning to. All right, so here we are on the surface. Nice. Check this out. We got trees. Of course, lots of clouds up above. And it uh, looks kind of like a spiraling circle area down here, so it's pretty neat. We'll have to check that out for sure. Got a, a bird statue over here, but as you can see, uh, it's not kind of active. It looks like it's been rusted over or something, so can't use that. All right, so here we're going to encounter our first surface enemies. These guys should be very familiar. These are, of course, the Ukubabas. Now, uh, one thing you can do with Fi is you can target an enemy, and uh, it'll give you the name. It's widespread in wooded areas. It's covered tough outer shell. The husk of its mouth, is just, the inside of its mouth is soft. So you have different kinds of varieties. So you can get some information about enemies. She doesn't usually say anything too worthwhile, but... Uh, so with these, you can either stab them like this, which is not very recommended because it takes multiple hits, or you can just do a swipe along the open part of their mouths. You can see this one opens vertically, so that'll take care of it. So everything in this game, since it uses motion controls, they make sure to use those to the maximum. You're going to be seeing it. See, here's one with vertical and horizontal, so you can do that. Block this guy, do that. So, there we go. That was pretty smooth. <laughs> Alright, so let's jump down and see what we've got going on here. Oh no, that was slightly unsettling. We've seen that big black mouth creature a couple times before. Mostly kind of envisions to Link, so I wonder what that's going to signify. So let's check out this little building over here. Looks like something's going on with the door. Master, I have information to report. Well then just say it. <laughs> well, these doors appear to have been opened recently. They're now sealed shut by a powerful unidentified force. Ah. So, yep, no go on these things. Not gonna happen, so I guess we should check this place out. I don't know, it seems like he's kind of a little bit scary, you know, with all those visions coming down. I'm not sure if I was Link that I'd want to do this, but gotta take the plunge, so let's do it. The sail cloth is very useful here. We can use it to just kind of jump towards the middle much faster than climbing all the way down. Ooh, wow, check that out. Listen to the sound it makes. Ooh, that's creepy. Young one. Child of Destiny descended from the sky. Raise the sword of the goddess Skyward. Take aim at the evil aura and unleash its power. Hmm. 
I'm not sure who was given those helpful instructions, but I guess we should try it. Let's do a Skyward Strike on this thing. Master Link, I'm sensing a change in the area that was triggered by your Skyward Strike. I have also detected an aura that correlates closely to your sailcloth. I surmise this aura belongs to Zelda. I can lead you in the direction of this aura through a process known as dowsing. Would you like me to explain this process to you? No, please don't. I'll do it myself. Alright, so yeah, we can switch our dowsing targets. So dowsing, another big... Uh, introduction thing a feature that's been introduced in this game you can see we have a, a couple of things we can basically look for this is your search for option so we can pick Zelda and as you can see we'll kind of bring in our sword let's recenter here and you can see uh, once we get kind of closer to where we're gonna go the thing lights up and kind of has that little aura makes a little sound so this is basically if you have an objective you can look for you can use dowsing to sort of tell which way you need to head we're not going to be using it that much, like, if you really kind of already know where things are, it's not that useful. But, um, you know, if you really don't know, and there's a couple things where you're going to have to search for, like, multiple objects, and there are a couple places where dowsing is actually required, so... Well, let's see. Yep, oh, it's over this way. <laughs> I was getting a little bit turned around here. But for the most part, we're pretty much going to be steering clear of dowsing, because I generally already know where to go. So let's go ahead and check this place out again. It looks like something happened with this door. Ah, cool. Maybe it's openable now. Yeah, let's do it. Hmm, alright, the sealed temple, huh? It's kind of a cool place. Nah, let's get off of that dowsing. Yeah, you can tell uh, this is pretty much where we need to head, that right there. So, let's go back into look mode, though. Let's just take a look. You know, it's always good to kind of just look around at the scenery. It's pretty well done in this game, so uh, if you miss out on that, you miss out on quite a bit. But yeah, it's a pretty interesting place. You can tell definitely very ancient, kind of covered over with vines and different various plants and stuff. Got a little area over here. Looks like something uh, might have been planted here in the past, but it's been uprooted or something. Not sure. Got some pots. Got a place to sit down and view if we want. And a, a little dialogue box, box pops up. I have no idea why it does that. All right, so let's uh, let's quit messing around in here. Not too much else to see. Let's uh, head up here. I don't know what that is up there. Oh, it's a person. <laughs> it's an interesting little hat coat blanket thing you've got there ah the traveler descended from the clouds above i welcome you child of fate that's some long is that hair or is that like rope mm -hmm. tell me what is your name link ah link good very good i sense you have already gained control over the sacred power that fills your sword when pointed skyward the skyward strike is yours to command it is proof that you are fit to bear the blade you carry I have sat here for many years waiting for you to arrive, all so that I could fulfill my purpose as your guide. You stand under the roof of the sealed temple, a place built by the goddess an eternity ago. Your arrival here was predestined many, many years ago. The spirit maiden you seek arrived here shortly before you, descending to this land in a shower of light. There's no doubting it, the gears of fate have begun to turn. Yet all is not as it should be. The Spirit Maiden was not meant to reach this land in the manner she did. I feel an evil power working in the shadows. It moves to warp the destiny of which you two are a part. Link. You are concerned for the Spirit Maiden and seek her whereabouts, yes? That is understandable, but for now you must focus on moving forward. That girl has her own purpose she must pursue, as do you. She set out for Farron Woods to discover that destiny for herself, and you must follow. Show me your map. The X upon your map marks the path that will lead you to Farron Woods. You will be traveling an unfamiliar land. Many monsters have settled here, and a map may not prove guidance enough for your journey. And so I will give you the power to create beacons. 
When a beacon is marked on your map, a column of light will stand at that location and will act as your waypoint from afar. Point at the X and press C to place a beacon. Alright, beacons, yeah, so with these things we can send off columns of light, we'll see this a little bit better later. You gotta place it pretty much right on it or she'll complain. There we go. Though you cannot see it from where we are, a beacon stands outside to guide you. Leave the temple through the front doors and see for yourself. When you no longer have a use for a beacon, you can remove it from your map by pressing C. Use your beacons well and you will never fear getting lost. Go now. You must head into Farron Woods and chase after the Spirit Maiden, the one you call Zelda. On your way out, take the contents of the treasure chest within this room. What you find there should prove useful to you on your journey. You are ready. Leave through the door before you and head into the woods. I wish you safe travel. Know that all the questions you have now will be answered in time. For now, Link, go bravely. Uh, Alright, so... Yeah, not much introduction here. Let's see what Fai has to say, actually. Name and other information are unknown. The signs indicated this individual is extremely aged, yeah. No danger from her aura. She's here to protect the temple. Hmm. So yeah, even Fai doesn't know what's going on. It looks like there's kind of a crack back here. What's... What's back here? Can we... Hmm. Some kind of, like orange crystal. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. I went back here, lady. Hey, can you open this thing for me? I don't know. You got a familiar crest on it, though, so I don't know. Maybe we'll do something with that later, but I guess for now, we just have to leave through the front door and see what's out there. Uh, she mentioned a treasure chest, which is just around the corner here. We want to open it up, and you can see we get revitalizing potion. Not only do we get the potion, though, we actually get... Uh, nope, wrong button. There we go. We actually get a second bottle. Yes, so we actually already have our first two bottles here. So, yeah, it's going pretty quickly. I'm off-centered again. There we go. <laughs> it's like it wasn't going to the left. Alright, so yeah, not too much else to check out here. I say we go through the front doors. We created a beacon outside. Those are pretty useful, I guess, if you don't really know your way around too much. Up, and there it is, the first low battery notification. Oh, this should be fun. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, you can see uh, there's our beacon that we place lighting the way. It goes up pretty high. It's mostly actually useful in the overworld, so you can tell what island you need to go on. <sighs> and this also happens whenever your battery runs low. Master, the batteries in your Wii Remote are nearly depleted. That's so out of character and jarring and everything, I can't even begin to explain. But, alright, so we're almost done here, so we don't need to worry about the battery too much. See, so we got some birds around here, some little variety, not the loft wings. We could chase them off. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Oh, what's this? Out of the way, scram! Uh-oh, this guy's in trouble. I think we should help. There we go. Take a couple of them, we can finish this one off. Oh, crap. Oh, <laughs> man, that was really close. Yeah, this can actually be somewhat tough, fighting these guys in large groups. Looks like we did okay there. That was a stupid hit. I want to be picking these things up, though. You don't see too many of them. These are ornamental skulls, much like the um, blob of jelly or whatever we picked up earlier. They're collectibles. We want to definitely get them. Uh, we can use them to upgrade stuff later. Getting three there was actually pretty lucky. So these guys, now that we're down to just one, I'd say we can uh, probably explain them a little bit better. They'll try to block, as you can see. They're pretty good at it for the most part. If you want to make sure to get them, you can uh, block their attacks. Of course, I did that incorrectly. My shield took damage. There we go. And you can take them that way. So Usually, those guys, they're simple enough that you can just kind of swing wildly at them and it won't matter. Just who were those red pests? I did not expect to run into a pack of them in this peaceful forest. Same goes for you. This is the second time I've bumped into one of your kind today. I tell you, all sorts of weird things are going on lately. I owe you big for taking care of those guys, so let me tell you something fascinating. Hey, hey bud, I'm Gorko the Goron. Wow, that is fascinating. <laughs> I am research I'm researching the ancient history of these woods here. According to the ancient texts, there's some kind of place up above called the Isle of the Goddess, far up in the sky. Apparently, these old statues serve as landmarks to those traveling up to the sky or down from this Isle of the Goddess place. If you find one, be sure to examine it to keep tabs on the number of landmarks. They're rumored to be quite useful. Supposedly, this statue is special, as it's said to have the ability to activate all the other statues. The whole thing sounds a little crazy, I know, but I for one believe it to be true. 
Otherwise, why would all these statues be all over the place? I don't know, decoration? It's a real head-scratcher, bud. Makes you want to know more, does it not? Well, he can explain some more stuff, but nothing really too interesting, so we'll just tell him no. Whoa, check that out. Whoa! What in the world just happened? Did you use some kind of magic? The statue reacted the moment you got near it, bud. How crazy is that? Pretty crazy. Alright, so yes, our bird statues have now activated, and these are the red variety, the surface variety. If we examine one of these, you can see we can actually head back to the sky if we want. These are going to be our ticket, basically, up and down. And you want to examine all these red bird statues that you can, because these actually serve as places that you can land later on. So you definitely want to make sure to examine every single one, but uh, for now I think this is a pretty good place to stop, so we'll go ahead, save, and quit. Uh, next time we will venture further into the surface area here and see what we can find. So until then, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.